Okay, should we get started? All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Just before we start, I'll just take you through a couple of housekeeping things for the presentation. So this webinar will be recorded and the recording will be made available after the event. <laughs> For the duration of this webinar, your microphone has been automatically muted. So if you'd like to submit a question, please click on the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you don't wish for your question or comment to be in the recording, please contact science at anu.edu.au. So I'll post that website in the chat for everyone. And I'll hand you over to Ian. Thank you, Kelly, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Ian Walker. I'm Director of the Research School of Psychology at the ANU. I will um, just try and share my screen now. Uh, hope that the technology works here. Okay, so welcome. Um, let me start by uh, acknowledging the Ngunnawal people, the traditional owners of the land on which I live and work and on which we meet today, and to pay my respects to elders past and present. Uh, Kelly's already uh, let you know how to post questions um, as we go through, and I hope we have enough time, uh, plenty of time at the end of my short presentation uh, for us to uh, run through all your questions. Um, so today I'll uh, run through in order um, some aspects about studying psychology generally and also about psychology at the ANU uh, and talk about how you become a psychologist in this country and what the employment prospects are. Sorry um, to interrupt Ian, your presentation just hasn't come up. Oh, okay. Excuse me, everyone. Um, it was there five minutes ago when we <laughs> went perfectly before. Yeah. Are we up to, can you see anything now, Kelly? Yep, that's perfect. Okay. So. Excuse me, everyone. There we go. So as I was saying, uh, I'll run through uh, some aspects about uh, what psychology is, um, what sort of careers it can lead to, uh, pathways to becoming a psychologist in Australia, a little bit about psychology at the ANU, um, and uh, we'll end all of that might take half an hour or so, uh, and that should leave us 20 or 30 minutes for our Q&A at the end. Um, as Kelly said in the introduction, as we go through, if you have any questions, use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen, um, type your questions in there, uh, and Kelly will be the moderator for the session, and, uh, and we'll go through your questions at the end. So first of all, what is psychology? Um, I'm gathering many of you, most of you in the audience are probably coming to the end of your time at high school, but given the times we're in right now. Um, it's quite possible also many of you are um, uh, looking for retraining or um, you know, just redesigning your, your work life, your career. Um, so across everyone, uh, there's, there's some misunderstanding in the community, I guess, about exactly what psychology is. And there is a popular conception the psychology is really kind of psychotherapy or psychoanalysis or psychiatry. Uh, it's really important to let everyone know, be clear that psychology is not psychiatry, nor is it psychotherapy, nor is it counselling. Um, it's important, or well, there are differences, uh, important differences between all of those different professions. Psychiatry, for example, requires that you do a medical degree to begin with, um, and psychology does not. Counseling, for example, um, uh, is not a registered, um, regulated profession in this country. Psychology is. Uh, so lots of important differences. Um, psychology is, uh, is, is the scientific study of human behavior and experience. It's the science of what it is to be a human. It's a set of knowledge that we have about you and me and us and them. 
Um, so along with being a, a science, psychology is also uh, it's a, it's a form of professional practice. It's the application of psychological knowledge to assessment and intervention for behavioral and other sorts of problems. And that is, I guess, the, that latter part is really what most people think of when they think of psychology. In Australia and most of the English speaking parts of the world, psychology as a profession is built on something known as the scientist practitioner model. And all of psychological practice in the profession of psychology rests on uh, fundamental science of, of humans. So in other words, psychology is both a discipline of science and, a, and an area of professional practice. There's some major areas of study within the discipline. Uh, so it's not just a, a single uniform science, uh, but has many different aspects. So developmental psychology uh, looks at how, uh, how humans change across the lifespan from cradle to the grave. Uh, learning and, and forgetting is, is a really important area. Cognitive psychology looks at um, the ways in which we process information and the relationships between how we understand or how we process information, both consciously and unconsciously, and things like emotion, affect, and behavior. Uh, a science of uh, humans inevitably has to look at biological aspects, including neuropsychology. Uh, a heavy part of what it is to be a human uh, uh, it depends on how we perceive the world around us. So you know, how, how we acquire information and experience through our various senses. Social psychology looks at um, beliefs, values, attitudes, how they relate to behavior, but also how, uh, how we, how we um, behave and experience life in groups and crowds. Clinical psychology is, is what I referred to earlier. It's really the professional practice of psychology. Uh, and health psychology is a burgeoning area these days and looks at interventions to try to promote healthier ways of living. So it's not directly clinical psychology, it's relevant to all of us. Um, how to encourage healthier, better uh, lifestyles, so better use of exercise, better diet, maintaining better uh, body weight and so on. Psychology is a really popular uh, area of study within Australia and well, within Australian universities. Um, many, it's important to state many people who complete a, an undergraduate psychology degree do not go on to work as professional practicing psychologists, as registered psychologists. Many, possibly even the majority of students who do an undergraduate degree in psychology end up in a whole variety of jobs that are not closely related to psychology or don't require registration as a psychologist. So what sorts of jobs do psychology graduates go into after graduation? Um, I posted here or um, grabbed a screenshot from a website that's hosted by Deakin University's School of Psychology and we'll put the web address at the bottom there. And it's, I recommend you go and have a look, have a play around with that website. Uh, because it really does a very good job, the best job I'm aware of in, in Australia, at describing the sorts of jobs that psychology graduates are eligible to apply for. So it includes the community sector, health and human services, working in uh, children's and families. Most states and territories have a, a department, a, a government department of um, families and children. Uh, many people go into government policy and research, work in the justice system and all sorts of areas. Um, so a psychology degree, even if you don't go on to become a registered psychologist, can take you many, many different places. Another useful sort of resource for you is to go to the Australian Psychological Society's website. The APS is the peak professional body for psychology in this country. Um, now the website, and again, I'll put a, a screen grab there, includes uh, some information that's freely available to the public, including information about careers in psychology, which is the tab I've highlighted there. Um, the tab just below that, um, head in psychologists talk about their careers, <clears throat> is a fairly interesting uh, insight into the, the experience that many people have 
around the country working in psychology. So if you want to get a snippet of what it's like in the many different, working in many, the many different facets of psychology, I, I commend you, I recommend that to you to have a read, have a listen. Um, it's full of all sorts of insights there. Uh, but just generally that website is useful if you're trying to scope out where a psychology degree might take you. The APS also runs this um, facility here, Psych Exchange, which is really a, a job register um, uh, where you can search using keywords, locations and so on for jobs that are available to people who are registered psychologists. So this is beyond undergraduate training. Um, so just last week, I, um, it was a Wednesday last week, I uh, typed in or accessed that job site um, and I think there were about 1,800 jobs listed there. Um, sorry, wrong website. This one uh, had 206 current jobs available for people who are registered psychologists. Of course, you can always have a look at the, the more traditional, more common um, job sites such as SEEK. And again, last week, I just typed in psychology, didn't constrain it by area or anything. And there were 3,800 jobs listed there related or that popped up just using the keyword search for psychology. So if you're at the stage in your life right now where you're looking, trying to decide what sort of degree to undertake to, that will lead into different sorts of careers, um, it's really worthwhile spending some time just looking to see what sort of jobs are available and what sort of requir degree requirements that those jobs have and where a psychology degree can take you. This is a screen grab from a, a job, uh, sorry, a website run by the federal government called Job Outlook. Um, the URL is down the bottom there. <clears throat> and again, it's a useful resource um, to have a look at. So if you go to that website and type in psychology, it'll give you this information, or it did last week, um, that the average weekly pay in Australia for people working as a psychologist or a psychotherapist is a bit more than 1800 bucks a week. More importantly though, the future growth <clears throat> um, for that occupation is anticipated to be very strong. Uh, and I think if you're at the start of um, undergraduate study, that's an important thing to know. The job prospects in this area are seen to be very strong. Um, and it has been like that for many years, and I don't imagine it's going to diminish any time soon. And certainly through all the various crises that we've lived through in this country this year, uh, in every single one, um, mental health, the provision of mental health support and uh, support services has been front and center from bushfires through COVID. Um, mental health issues, well-being issues are, are central. Um, there is a, a very strong need and there will continue to be a very strong need for people trained in those areas and able to work there. So if you're unsure about what you want to do following graduation, um, it's well worth your time having a look around at some of those resources to see where they'll take you. It's important also to remember that, uh, and I'm sure you've heard many, many times already, um, that the, the jobs of the future are not the jobs that we know right now. And that uh, predictions are that people finishing high school now probably have about five or six changes of career, not just changes of job, but changes of career across their working life. A psychology degree is an extremely versatile degree, partly because it gives you what are sometimes called hard skills, it gives you direct knowledge about the science and the practice of psychology, but also built into a psychology degree is a whole set of soft skills. And it's often those soft skills that will get you um, jobs in areas that are just a you know, degree or two away from narrowly defined jobs in psychology. So a degree in psychology will involve an awful lot of hard work, out of which you will um, develop so-called soft skills in problem solving, 
analytical skills, critical thinking, communication skills, and so on. And those are highly employable skills to have. So that's a, a lot about the general landscape of psychology and, and uh, future employment prospects. Um, I'm going to switch a little bit now to talk about pathways to becoming a psychologist. So in this country, the, the title of psychologist is a protected title, which means that if you want to work as a psychologist, you must be registered as a psychologist. Uh, and if you practice or, or call yourself a psychologist and you're not registered, that is in fact a criminal offence. It's the same as calling calling yourself a lawyer or a doctor or a dentist or somebody else, um, don't do it, um, it's a bad thing. So to become a registered psychologist um, requires uh, a number of pathways to becoming a registered practicing psychologist. All the pathways require postgraduate study. So a three year qualification will not get you, uh, allow you to be registered. You need to do a bit more study after that. But all, all the pathways require initially a three year undergraduate degree in psychology. And importantly, all your qualifications, including your initial undergraduate degree, must be from an accredited program. So in Australia, there's a thing called the Australian Psychology Accreditation Council, APAC, which assesses every single program that's offered in psychology around the country every five years. So every school or department of psychology and all its programs of study are reviewed rigorously by APAC for accreditation. Um, and if you have a qualification, sorry, if you want to register, the, all your qualifications must be from APAC accredited programs. Um, all of our new psychology programs are. So this is where it starts to become a little complicated. Um, so this diagram comes from the Australian Psychological Society's website and it shows you different pathways to registration as a psychologist. So all the pathways start at the top of the diagram with step one, you must complete an undergraduate psychology sequence, a three year degree in psychology. If you already have completed a degree in something else, you don't necessarily have to complete a whole another degree, you can um, either enter an undergrad degree and get credit and exemption, or you can do what is sometimes called a graduate diploma in psychology, which is an equivalent um, if you already have a degree. Following that three year degree, you then apply for and can gain entry into a fourth year, um, year of study. <clears throat> So usually it usually takes the form of an honours degree, but some universities also offer a postgraduate diploma as an equivalent. So if you're at that point right now, if you're completing your fourth year of study, then when we go to step three, on the left-hand side, you'll see a box that says four, four plus two in turn two. That is a pathway to registration which requires four years of study, so steps one and two, plus two years full-time equivalent supervised experience. That is a pathway that leads to general registration. That pathway will close in 2022. So for students commencing next year, you won't complete four years of, four years of study in time to enter the profession through that pathway. So that, that's effectively closed for you now. The next box along in step three, the five plus one, is designed to replace the four plus two pathway. So you do steps one and step two. Then you must complete a, another year of um, study. It's sometimes called a Master of Professional Psychology, sometimes called a Graduate Diploma of Psychology. Um, <clears throat> so, and after that fifth year of study, you do one year of supervised practice. And after that, you're eligible to register. The other pathways um, so on, on that step three row, there's a professional master's, a combined master's and a PhD or a professional doctorate. Taking respectively two years, four years or three to four years to complete. 
So after you finish your fourth year of study, which is usually an honours course, you enter one of those three degrees. And at the completion of that, you're eligible to register for general registration. General registration means that you're able to practice as a psychologist. You're able to get a provider number for Medicare and you're eligible to claim, re or clients are eligible to claim rebates for the time that they spend with you. There is um, an additional step in registration, which is not required, but many people take. And that is to gain what is called an area of practice endorsement. So if you want to be called, call yourself a, a practice as a clinical psychologist or a clinical neuropsychologist or an organizational psychologist or an educational psychologist, there's about 12 different areas of practice. It's a psychology with a, with a prefix, with an adjective. Most people become clinical psychologists, but there are other, I think 11 other different areas of practice. Each of those requires you initially to be generally registered and then do further, um, a complete a further registrar program. Following that, let's say you take the, the path to, um, uh, through clinical psychology, you can register as a, a psychologist with a clinical area of practice endorsement. That then allows um, you to claim higher rebates or your clients to claim higher rebates through Medicare and a bunch of other things. So the, the pathways to registration are somewhat complicated. It takes a little while to get your head around it, but every single pathway requires people to start uh, or to complete a three-year degree in psychology. There is another way of doing of being a psychologist, and that is um, to do what I did and what my colleagues in the school did, and that is to become an academic or research psychologist. And that usually requires a PhD. The PhD takes a three-year undergrad degree, followed by one year of honours, followed by a PhD that's usually mostly three to four years, but sometimes takes quite a bit longer than that. Um, so I'll turn now to talk a little bit about psychology at the ANU. So I mentioned earlier that uh, if you want to, sorry, start that again. I mentioned earlier that uh, APAC um, accredits courses in psychology and departments or schools of psychology. Most universities in this country offer degrees in psychology. And as far as I'm aware, all of them offer accredited sequences in psychology. There is no university that I'm aware of in Australia that offers a course of study in psychology that is not accredited. So that, in a sense, lets, gives you some degree of comfort. It almost doesn't matter which university you go to, you will be getting an accredited degree, uh, qualification. And that means that the content and delivery reach some sort of minimal standard. You'll get a good training in psychology almost no matter where you go. So then why would you choose to come to the ANU rather than the University of Canberra or Charles Sturt University or <clears throat> any of the other 30 odd universities in the country? So I'll, I'll say a little bit about how, what, what I think makes us a bit different and a little bit unique. So this is another complicated uh, slide. It's like pathways to registration. The ANU offers a number of different options to people wanting to do an undergraduate uh, course in psychology. Um, for most students taking psychology at the ANU, you will enroll in a Bachelor of Science bracket psychology. You don't have to do that though. You can just enroll in a Bachelor of Science or in a Bachelor of Arts. Those three options all have a minimum ATAR for entry of 80. A couple of other pathways uh, open to you. One is called a Bachelor of Psychology Honours, an ATAR of 90. The other is a Bachelor of Philosophy, which is a, an ATAR, entry ATAR of 99. In both of those programs, um, you'll do essentially the same 
amount of, of the same psychology courses as part of your program of study, but you'll do a little bit more. So the Bachelor of Psychology Honours requires you to do one or two more courses than the other options. And the Bachelor of Philosophy also requires or provides uh, the opportunity, but also requires uh, students in that program to engage in a number of research activities um, with academic staff in the school. The Bachelor of Psychology Honours and the Bachelor of Philosophy both guarantee you a four year sequence. So you get the three year degree and guaranteed entry into honours, provided you maintain a, a grade point average of at least 75. The Bachelor of Science, Psychology and the Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts are three year programs of study. They don't have any minimum uh, GPA that you need to maintain. And at the end of those, programs of study, if you want to do honours, you have to apply for entry. Um, normally entry into honours will require a GPA of about 75. The School of Psychology at ANU also offers um, a Master of Professional Psychology, Master of Clinical Psychology, and PhD in Clinical Psychology, which are all pathways into registration the Master of Professional Psychology, I'll just mention here a little bit because it functions as an equivalent, oh, sorry, as an alternative to the honours. So at the end of three years, um, you complete a say, Bachelor of Science in Psychology or BA, you can apply for entry into honours or you can apply for entry into a Master of Professional Psychology, which combines honours and the first year of a master's clinical psychology course, roughly. And at the completion of that, you're then eligible to register. I'll say no more about postgrad uh, study because it's way down the track for you. You can also do um, pursue a, a further study and research either through a Master of Philosophy or PhD. Uh, and there's no coursework, those are solely research um, degrees. So why would you come come to the ANU and somewhere else. Partly um, because by a number of external international indicators, the ANU and psychology at the ANU are high status. Um, we compete uh, very, very strongly on the international stage. So one such set of rankings, the, the QS rankings, put psychology at the ANU as fifth nationally out of about 14 and 31st globally. So you come into a high status, high quality um, school of psychology and it's recognized as that. The way we deliver our um, whole undergraduate sequence and all our um, educational programs, they are research driven. Um, so there's a very strong emphasis on incorporating cutting edge knowledge from the science of psychology into the classroom. Um, the last two dot points on that slide uh, refer to the fact that the vast majority of uh, our graduates out of psychology at ANU are satisfied um, with their educational experience at the ANU and they have outstanding job prospects, high employability, high starting salary. The data for those two claims come from the web address at the bottom there, Quilt. Uh, so Quilt is uh, quality indicators for learning and teaching. It is a resource um, supported by the federal government and it involves annual surveys of current students and people who graduated in the previous year. And ask a bunch of questions about how satisfied were you with your um, time in the course, uh, what are you doing after the course? And along with those resources I provided um, a little while ago, it is a useful, um, if, if you're weighing up where to go, what to study, it's a useful resource because it allows you to compare what students and graduates have said about their time wherever they're studying. So 
as a student undergrad, as an undergraduate student at the research school of psychology, I knew you would be actively engaged in uh, lab classes right from first year. Uh, so we we do provide a lot of educational support online, but a lot of our um, classes are built around having students on campus in labs, in lectures, in tutorials, and encouraging that active engagement. It's better for learning. It's better for um, building a sense of a cohort and um, better for meeting new friends. Um, our classes are relatively small. So the lectures in first year, uh, the two main courses that we offer in first year, have uh, an enrollment of around about 400, 450, which sounds a lot if you're coming from high school. Um, but if you're going to the University of Sydney or the University of Queensland, the equivalent courses at those sorts of institutions have enrollments of about 1,500 or more. So they're relatively small. We maintain the lab classes at 20 to 25 people. Um, and that allows um, students to have good relationships with tutors, with TAs, and with the academic staff. The undergraduate course that we offer um, includes a number of electives that we're free to choose, uh, to enrol in, and they're clustered around areas of research strength in the school, so clinical and health psychology, cognition and perception, and social psychology. Uh, there are many opportunities for students to become engaged in independent research um, with academic staff in the school, and the campus itself is, um, is thriving current constraints uh, notwithstanding. Uh, so the, the ANU itself is a relatively small research-led university with a very active, thriving, vibrant on-campus life. The programs that we offer allow a fair degree of flexibility uh, to students. So you can combine easily psychology with other science courses, so if you happen to have a bent towards I don't know, biology or genetics or mathematics, plenty of, it's fairly easy to, to include that in there. If, you, on the other hand, you're more inclined to history, sociology, philosophy, you can easily incorporate that study as well. And the ANU also allows um, you to combine degrees, so you can do a law science or an art science degree, at the end of which you will have two qualifications so for example, uh, a law degree and a, a Bachelor of Science in Psychology degree. They, that, doing that though will often add an extra year of study to be able to require, it will allow you to complete all the requirements for both programs of study. And the, I'm kind of mindful of time, so I'll, I'll skip through these. These are just lists of the courses um, that you will do in first year. A wide range of required courses in second year and in third year. So not all of those courses are required. Some are and some are electives. And you can fill up your whole degree with them pretty much if you like. Then in honours, uh, as I mentioned a little while ago, entry is competitive. It's based on your performance in the first three years and usually requires a grade point average of about 75. Um, and we admit maybe 50 to 60 students into the honours program each year. Half of your time there will be spent doing coursework. And the other half is uh, you get to do a research project under the supervision of an academic staff member, which you write up as a thesis at the end. And many of our students end up being able to publish the you know, research that they do in honours. So that's a lot of information presented fairly quickly. I'm sure it may be making a few heads spin. More than happy to, to uh, try and answer the questions you have if you post them in the Q&A. If you're wanting to seek more information about psychology and about the AEU, I'd encourage you to go to the Open Day website. Um, you can also find out a lot more information about psychology at, at the AEU from our school's homepage. Um, and it might be worth your while having a look at the Australian Psychological Society's website as well, just to see all the whole range of um, what the, the peak professional body of psychology in this country um, offers and lets you know about psychology. 
There are some other presentations happening during orientation week at, it's not really week, sorry, open week, um, not orientation week, I beg your pardon. Um, so Dr. Kristen Murray will be giving a talk on Tuesday, uh, along with a couple of current students, um, on pathways into professional psychology at the ANU. On Friday, uh, the presentation from another colleague, Stephanie Goodhue, um, with some discovery uh, demonstrations, if you like. And then there are some recorded sessions. Um, Michael Plato, who is the Associate Director for Education within the school, will be giving um, a more detailed, inf uh, will give you more detailed information about what you will be doing as a student of psychology at the ANU. And then there are a couple of webinars that have been pre-recorded. One was led by Amy Doll on social, socio-emotional tools for maintaining mental health during the pandemic. And that was a, a webinar that we in the school produced three, four months ago now, which was meant for um, as, as a resource for the general community about maintaining uh, or resources for um, maintaining mental health during the pandemic. Uh, and Michael Plato has another webinar on uh, you know, the attempting title of greatness. Um, if you want more information about how to apply to psychology or to any course, um, that top uh, URL is where you need to go. And then um, obviously all of life at the ANU, all of life generally is uh, severely uh, restricted right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the advice for staff and students at the ANU changes um, in accordance with uh, the most recent health advice and that advice is, uh, is constantly updated on the website there. And you can go to the UAC website uh, or the ANU website to apply. And um, Apologize for racing through a lot of um, sometimes dense information uh, very quickly. Um, but if you have any questions, please fire away. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. So there's one question that we've got a few times already, and that's, are there any prerequisites that you need to study in year 12 for psychology? Um, no, there's a short answer. Uh, it depends solely on uh, your ATAR. And having said that though, there are some things that are going to help a little bit more. So uh, as some of you may be aware, there is a requirement in our psychology program, and indeed in every psychology program around the country, that you take some courses in statistics and methods. Um, many students get a little bit anxious um, and put off by that. There is no need, we're well aware that students get anxious and we cater for that, we try to um, um, accommodate that. But if, uh, you know, if you're able and interested enough in uh, doing some form of mathematics at, at year 11 and 12, then that may help. Um, but the sort of mathematics and statistics in the undergraduate program, uh, if you can calculate your change when you and over ten dollars for a cup of coffee. That's enough. That will get you through your stats class. Okay. So we've got another one. I'm interested in studying neuroscience as part of my undergraduate degree. What are some of the undergraduate options for this at ANU? So uh, there are a couple of courses in our undergraduate sequence that would be directly relevant. One is on neuropsychology explicitly, and the other is on uh, biological psychology. Um, so you would get exposure there. Uh, some of our, a couple of our academic staff are experts and in, in, in do research on neuroscience and clinical neuroscience. Uh, so if you're interested in stalking the work of Bruce Christensen, um, who is the director of our clinical programs, have a look at his research because he does an enormous amount of research on clinical neuropsych. Um, if you're enrolled in a Bachelor of Science, you can certainly pick up courses outside of psychology and biology and elsewhere that will cater to the interest in neuroscience um, and biological science more generally. 
This one is a two-parter. Can I become a registered clinical psychologist through all of the undergraduate pathways that you mentioned? And is there a way to reduce the duration by taking up more units each semester? Um, you, can you say the first part of the question again, Kelly? Sorry. I'll... Can I become a registered clinical psychologist through all of the undergraduate pathways you mentioned? Yes, absolutely. Sorry. Um, so all of those undergraduate pathways, the BA, the BSc, BSc Psych, uh, and the rest, uh, are all fully accredited. So they will function uh, equivalently in terms of um, the pathway to registration. Uh, I should have said you don't have to complete all the different components of the educational requirements at the same university. So you can do undergraduate degree at ANU, go to the University of Cambridge to do honours, go to another university to do a master's, and many people do that. Um, you, so you can uh, take more psychology courses each semester um, throughout the whole time, but it won't necessarily, the only way you can speed up the three year time frame for a degree is by overloading. So normal full-time enrollment is four courses in a semester for two semesters in each of the three years. Um, you can overload taking five courses in a semester, but the, if you do that every semester, the most time you can save is six months. And I, I would generally not recommend doing it um, it's spaced that way for a reason. So a full-time load of four courses should be treated the same as about the same amount of time and energy and commitment as a full-time working job. So if, you've, if you're studying four courses in a semester, set aside 40 hours a week to do that, plus overtime when you come up to exam time and, and a lot of exam, uh, essays and things too. Trying to squeeze more in um, might speed up the process by six months over three years, but I think you probably are not going to learn as much. You know, it's, it's kind of self-defeating. So um, rubbish the time as a student, you know, soak it up, love it, because you don't get that time again once you start working. Okay, so the next two are about honours entry, mm -hmm. um, but I'll, I'll do them separately. If I do the flexible double degree in, say, psychology and international relations, can I go on to do the honours or master's pathways to registration? Absolutely. Um, so the, the minimum entry requirement for, well, the minimum requirement for entry into honours in psychology is a GPA of 75, thereabouts. Um, based on your performance in psychology. So if you do international relations or philosophy or literature, um, that, that we care less about that. Obviously we care about the fact that you're learning a lot and learning how to learn. Um, but it, the, what we want, the minimum you need to do in your three year sequence is either 12 or 13 courses of study in psychology across the three years. There's 12, the minimum is 12 or 13, depending on which of those various undergrad streams you take. Um, so long as you do that, uh, then you're eligible for entry into honours subject to a grade point average. So this one is, if you complete a Bachelor of Arts majoring in psychology, as long as you have a 75 plus average, you could be considered for the honours program, or do you need to complete additional psychology electives and have the grade average to be considered? No, no complete the minimum of either 12, 12 if you're doing the BA psych, 12 courses uh, within the psychology set of courses that we offer, um, or 13 in a couple of the other streams. That's the minimum, you can do more, so we'd love you to do more, um, uh, but as long as you do that and have that minimum grade point average, then you're eligible for entry into honours. Just so say a word about that grade point average for entry into honours. So the, the minimum grade point average will vary a little bit from year to year because it's a competitive entry process. And every year we have a certain number of spots available 
in honors. And it's constrained by the number, because as an honors student, you spend 50% of your time working one-on-one -on -one with a member of academic staff doing a research project, there's a, a constraint on the number of students we can reasonably accommodate and still give that supervision, quality of supervision. So the, the grade point average, minimum grade point average for entry is usually about 75, but it can be higher if the cohort of students applying in any one year is particularly strong, um, but it won't really drop uh, below, much below 75. In fact, I don't think it has dropped below 75 recently. I hope that's clear. All right, next one. Do most psychology graduates gain employment in the ACT or interstate? That's a very good question. I don't know the answer. Um, yeah, I, that stumped me. I'm sorry, I don't have the answer to that. Uh, just anecdotally, I know that many students that I've had contact with who finish a three year or finish their honours degrees. Um, I would say there's probably a roughly even mix of people who end up working in the OCT or end up moving into state. And of the ones who've moved into state, I think most of them have wanted to. You know, either really Melbourne or Sydney is what draws them. Um, yeah, so I think the OCT currently is faring quite well in terms of unemployment rates. I mean, the, the hit to employment in the ACT has not been as hard because of COVID as it has been elsewhere. Um, so, I, yeah, but I, I don't know the data to answer the question accurately. So we just got one follow-up one from those honours entry questions. Do the students ha that have gained entry to the BSc Psychology Honours Program have priority to the honours year as long as they've maintained their GPA? Students in the BSc Psychology and in the um, Bachelor of Philosophy uh, uh, are guaranteed in entry in, you know, through the whole four years, so into honours, as long as they maintain that 75 um, GPA. Uh, it's, it's not a question of priority. Um, there's a little bit of juggling on our part, part that has to happen to accommodate all the students coming through the BSc uh, honours and the, the BPhil with everybody else. Uh, so it's not a question of priority, but just accommodating, if that makes sense. Okay, there's a couple here about um, masters. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the entry requirements to the Master of Professional Psychology is two referee reports. Are there any restrictions to qualification or referee? Um, no, there are not any hard restrictions, but they ought to be, I mean, it's, it, it would make sense uh, and be in your interest to have referees who uh, can comment knowledgeably about you and your performance in a particular job, if that's the case. Um, but also, secondly, are able to comment on things that are directly relevant to what you're going to be doing in the MPP or the MCP courses and programs. Um, so if you have a choice between two people who know you equally well, it obviously makes sense to choose one who's going to have a background in, have insight into how you're likely to perform as a student in the Master of Professional Psychology program. Um, but there's no, no hard requirement about the professional status of your referees. And another one about masters, can you get into the masters without completing the honours year? Uh, yes, in a complicated roundabout sort of way. Um, if you're just looking at the set of programs that we offer at ANU, the various combinations of undergraduate sequence honours, the, then the Master of Professional Psychology, Master of Clinical Psychology, then no, you have to complete one of the undergrad sequences honours and then into the Master of Clinical Psychology, or if you're going into the Master of Professional Psychology, you complete the three year sequence and then apply for entry into the MPP. 
But if you look around the country, other universities will offer honors equivalent courses, often called a graduate diploma of psychology. Um, you can complete one of them so long, as, so long as it's accredited, then that functions as the necessary gateway qualification into the uh, Master of Clinical Psychology program. So you can go that way. You don't necessarily have to have honours, but if you stay at ANU, that's the only, only way you can do it. The next one, I have been accepted as flexible double degree psychology and commerce. Should I choose Bachelor of Arts or Science or Science Psychology? And is there any difference between these three? Um, a very good question. Um, well, first of all, congratulations. Uh, secondly, I... I'm going to say what I think, but I'm going to qualify this and suggest you also ask that uh, question to the admissions people. Um, or if you email me separately, I can follow up the answer because I'm not 100% sure about this. Um, the, I'd probably recommend that you do the BSc site. Um, and if not that, then the BA. Uh, and just because it's a better fit with studying commerce. Um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter. But again, if you wanted to send me an email, my email address is ian.walker at anu.edu.au. I'd be happy to follow up just um, to make sure that I'm not giving you um, bad advice here. Uh, I'm very confident what I'm saying. Um, but I would want to double check. So please do send me an email and I will follow it up. I am down to my last question now, which is, could you also please show the slide on year two subjects again? Sure. Let's um, find it. So if anyone else has any questions, send them through. For some reason my machine is particularly slow right now. If I can get it. Is that showing up? Yep, that's it. Okay, so those, that's what we offer for second year courses. Um, the, some of them are uh, required courses and some are electives. Um, if you are only doing psychology, you'd be very free and welcome to enroll in all of them. Um, but you don't have to. The information about all the courses at each year level is also all available on our Research School of Psychology um, homepage, which you can access through the ANU homepage. And if you go to the ANU, <coughs> ANU homepage, um, you can also search for uh, programs and courses, it's called. There's a repository of all the programs of study and courses of study that are on offer, and you can find, you type in biological basis of behavior, that will give you um, a course description, uh, information about the amount of assessment and so on as well, so you can get a, a better sense of what's involved there. Um, Anne just said thank you as well for re-showing that. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, another one's come in, is there any advantage to taking the Bachelor of Psychology Honours compared to the BA or the BSI? Um, Advantage in what sense? Uh, if, if you're thinking about progressing into honours or um, the advantage of doing the Bachelor of Science bracket. No. Start that again. Uh, no is the short answer. Um, 
not at all. Regardless of which one you're in, you have the same degree of flexibility for picking up electives in international studies or philosophy or commerce or whatever else you're interested in doing, um, or just filling up as much of your program of study with as much psychology as you can get. Uh, but it functions basically identically. There's no difference made between students enrolled uh, in any of those streams. Um, you, you take the same courses of study, you do the same lectures, you do the same labs, you do the same assignments. There's not really any, any difference um, at all in, in your experience as a student. Uh, the only difference will be the, the, the name of the qualification that you get. And a BA counts just as much as a BSc or a BSc bracket psychology. Many of us, I've got a BA, many of us do. Okay, so um, we've just got one. Someone's just missed what you said and just wants to confirm that you cannot become a registered clinical psychologist if you do the BSc. Uh, no, I didn't say that. Um, so if you want to become a registered clinical psychologist, um, so if you're calling yourself a clinical psychologist, so I'm going to give a longer answer than you might have um, hoped for. Um, a registered clinical psychologist means that you have an area of practice endorsement in clinical psychology. So to get to that point, you need to have completed, working backwards, you need to have completed two years of experience following a Master of Clinical Psychology degree, which is a two-year program of study, which follows honours, which is a one year's, one year's worth of study, which follows a three-year undergraduate program of study in psychology, which can be either a BA, BSc, BSc Psychology, BPhil, any of those other things. So long as it's an accredited sequence in psychology, at the undergraduate level, you can progress through that long chain of qualifications to end up with an area of practice endorsement as a clinical psychologist. Okay. And just someone just wants some clarification. Can you fill up your three other courses in BA per semester with additional psychology electives? As much as possible within the constraints of um, you know, what we offer each semester. Yep. So uh, if you look at first year, for example, we have um, if, uh, so these are the first year courses, understanding mind, brain and behavior is offered first semester, understanding people in context in second semester. Those are both required courses. And then the well-being formula is an elective, a first year elective offered in second semester. So the most you could do in your first year are those three courses in psychology. And usually it's five courses that you have to pick up elsewhere at first year level. But as you go into second and third year, we offer more and more courses so you can progressively fill up more uh, of your full-time enrollment with psychology courses. Um, yeah, but, but you just have to make sure that you complete all 12 or in some versions 13 courses across the three years that are required. Okay. So we're just sitting on three o'clock. I've just had an apology come through from Melissa. She was pulled away and just wants to go over again. Um, can you go straight from a three year degree to masters or do you have to do honours? So it depends which master's. So the Master of Clinical Psychology, which is a, uh, it requires honours, or if you're coming from another university, an honours equivalent program like a graduate diploma. The Master of Professional Psychology that we offer doesn't require honours. So you do your three-year degree and then enter the Master of Professional Psychology um, so that doesn't require honours and it effectively combines your fourth year of study, honours level plus a fifth year um, into a master's course and that then leads into a master's program. That then leads to 
your ability to register as a psychologist. What you cannot do with an MPP qualification is go on to seek an area of practice endorsement. Um, so you'd be able to register as a psychologist, but you would not be able to get to a clinical psychology registration. Um, there are other pathways to get there, um, uh, but, but in the way it functions basically is, is um, if you want to be a psychologist, that, that functions perfectly well. If you want to be a clinical psychologist, prefer the Master of Clinical Psychology. But if you don't want to do honours, go straight into the Master of Professional Psychology. And you can hear much more about that from Kristen Murray's talk on, I think it was Tuesday. Entry into both the Master of Professional Psychology and Master of Clinical Psychology is competitive, it's very competitive. Um, and it's made up of a combination of your performance at uh, honours for the Master of Clinical Psychology or your undergrad sequence in psychology for the Master of Professional Psychology, plus letters of reference, plus uh, interviews or what are called station assessments, um, which takes a day and you have little workstations that um, that you perform at and, and that performance is assessed. So that's all part of the assessment process to get a place in the Master of Clinical Psychology program. And again, that's too much of an answer, more than you expected. Well, that's great. We got through all of the questions just in time for it to be three o'clock. Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, your interest in psychology at the ANU. Um, I hope I have clarified more than confused. Um, I would encourage you to um, pursue some of those web links uh, in the talk, but also come to some of the other talks during Open Week uh, this coming week. And I will wish everybody all the very best for students in year 12. Good luck with your exams. Um, and uh, yeah, good luck. Stepping on, on what sort of degrees you want to study uh, from here really important to find something that suits and fits because uh, three years is a long time in your life to study something and you better make sure you're interested in it. Otherwise, it's hard to get to the end. All the very best. And thank you very much, Kelly, for moderating so well. No trouble. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.